Sports Tonight is back again. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. It's always a delight to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakwan on the show tonight. We will say a prayer. Please join the footballing world to say a prayer for Emiliano Sala. He just signed a contract with Cardiff, got into that aircraft, and now it's been missing since yesterday. We will show some love for Salah, and then hopefully... I uh, will just pray that he's doing just fine. We'll talk about it tonight on the program. Cardiff, they have released a video of the missing player, Salah. Also on the show, we'll give you updates as regards the 2019 Nigeria Taekwondo Open. That's one uh, will be done from February the 8th till the 10th, right there at the Velodrome at the National Stadium in Abuja. We'll talk about it uh, on the show tonight, give you updates so you can follow. Fencing in Nigeria and its development uh, is a special uh, focus tonight on the show because... The Nigeria Fencing Federation, they've been doing their bits. You know what? They want you and I to understand fencing. It is big in Europe. It's kind of big in South Africa. And the Nigeria Fencing Federation, they believe that it can also be big in this country. So we're going to take a look at fencing and its development. Nigeria will be competing at an African Junior Cadet Championship that will take place in Urgers next month. How are they getting ready? I'll let you know. Eight fencers will represent the country. Five male fencers and three female fencers. So, uh, everyone is wondering, what is fencing? You normally see them with that stuff, it's the AP, they call it. It looks like a sword, and then they look for, you know, parts of the body where they gain points. So, it's, it's a bit technical of a sport, but yeah, we, we love talking about things that is not out there, and that's why we're giving fencing some attention on the show tonight. Walk with us on this journey because it has to do with grassroots fencing development and you will like it when we start talking about it. I also have updates coming from the camp of the Flying Eagles, the national under-23 team coach Paul Aigbogu has released his list for the under-20 AFCON. We will let you know all the players that made it to that list. Were you as surprised as I was when Jerome Boateng was unveiled as a new player for Barcelona? Surprise, surprise. So that's football for you. We will talk about it. Another, <clears throat> another um, transfer story is making the rounds in our world of sports. I'll let you know what's going on in the EFL Cup. It's a busy, racy, pacey, action-packed world of sports. There's also action going down at the Australian Open. The old guards, they say they're not going anywhere. But let's see. Uh, the competition is getting into that business stage. And then some of the guys uh, will be kissing it goodbye. Sports tonight on channels, television, it's uh, the Fun Factory. And I want you to be part of the program wherever you are in the world watching us. Welcome on board. Talk to us. I want to hear from you, particularly. Join us to say a prayer for Salah. We're looking for him on Twitter. We're channels underscore sports. Facebook channels, I feel sports. You can send us an email, sports tonight at channelstv.com. It gets better. All our top stories can be viewed on our website, channelstv.com. And on YouTube for us, last channels, we're blog on to m.channelstv.com and download the Channels TV app for any of those devices that you see right there on your screen. I want you to be part of the show. Let's do this show together because so much is going down in our world of sports. Let us begin with this update. I started the show by calling for a prayer. French authorities, they have confirmed that English Premier League footballer Emiliano Sala was on a light aircraft. Uh, which disappeared between France and Cardiff. They're still looking for that aircraft and the, and the uh, passengers on board. The Argentine striker, that seem right there, uh, in that aircraft. Let's pray for Salah. Uh, was one of the two people on board, uh, the Piper Malibu, uh, which went missing off Alderney in the Channel Island on Monday night. So we've been looking for him as his Monday night. He just signed a contract record transfer fee. For Cardiff City from Nuns, and he hasn't even kicked the ball. And this ugly news is coming. Cardiff City signed a 28 year old uh, for 15 million pounds from French Club Nuns on Saturday, just Saturday. Uh, Guernsey police said no trace, that's what they said, no trace of the missing aircraft have been found. Ah, let's pray for Salah. Let's just hope that they'll find that they're just somewhere waiting for help to come, and then hopefully. Uh, we'll get him back home. Let's bring the discussion back home now. Uh, updates from the 2019 Nigeria Open. We are counting down. It's now 17 more days to go. And Niger Republic, they have shown uh, that they want to come to Nigeria to win. Remember, they won the maiden edition. They have registered eight top taekwondoists for uh, the Nigeria Taekwondo Open. Uh, I told you that they won the first edition, including 
the best team trophy. And the main business. Uh, also, top uh, taekwondo countries such as Ghana, Senegal, and Mali. They will also be in Nigeria. So the big question is, I can our Nigerian athletes, you know, put up a good show, stop these guys from coming to shine with Nije Akam and then win it once again. I love the fact that we're talking about Taekwondo once again. Remember, uh, this will serve as a very good way for us to check our preparation for the All-Africa Games and the big one, which is the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. We saw Taekwondo at the National Sports Festival. That's some of the pictures you're seeing and it was really good. We need to sustain the momentum. Sports tonight on your award-winning sports club in China's television. Let's go on this quick timeout. When we come back, we'll discuss fencing in Nigeria. Don't go anywhere. Stay. This is my team, and my team makes me. Welcome back to tonight on Channel 7. Let's talk about fencing in Nigeria. Yes, fencing, it's not so popular in the country, but it's big in Europe and big in some parts of Africa. And that's what we are trying to do. Uh, let you know more about fencing and the Nigeria Fencing Federation. They so said one of the ways that you and I can start talking about it is when they go back to the basics, go to the foundation, discover talents. And of course, they will grow with the sports. That's what we want to do tonight. The Nigeria Fencing Federation, they have also announced that Nigeria will compete at next month's Junior Cadet Fencing Championship that will take place in Algeria. In Algeria. And we have uh, some top junior fencers in the house and the national coach also with us. And let us welcome Ekike or what the young, remind me of the last name? Edemeko. Edemeko is with us, the student of Rainbow College is with us in the studio tonight. Uh, thank you for leaving school to come out for us. You're welcome. Okay. Pleasure. Okay. So he will, he will be talking to us tonight. Also, he's got um, his friend and colleague Zafri on Lagoon. Zafri, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Oh, my God, that right. Yeah, okay, so feels that. Of course, at the national coach, uh, Eric Kokai Astrop. Good to have you around, coach. Thank you very much. Okay, so they will be talking about fencing with us tonight. And when you see the pictures, you start asking a lot of questions. Each time we talk about some sports that are not so known, you get people asking questions. That's fencing right there. And I'm going to start with you, Kiki. You're close to me. Just show me through at the basics of fencing. What are they trying to do and how do they win points? Yeah. Um, so basically what they're trying to do, they're fencing on what's called a piste or a strip in English. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is to score what is called a touch on their opponent, mm. which is basically using the tip of their blade to touch any part of the opponent's body. Because as we're seeing, we're watching epi fencing. So the target area is the entire body, mm. head, arm, hand, legs, feet, and all of that. So that's, that's basically right. it. That's right. And you do that so well. So are there, are there specific parts of the body where you touch and then you get more um, points? No, not, not necessarily, but um, with fencing, there are three weapons. There's the foil, there's the saber, and there's the epi. Okay. I personally am a foilist, so my target area is restricted just to the abdomen mm -hmm. and back. So anywhere on the abdomen and back scores me just one touch, okay, that's one for, point. That's for the foil. That's for foil. Okay. Same thing for epi, but it's just the entire body. So any touch scored on any part of the body scores one point. Mm. Then for saber, the entire upper body, arms, head included. One, one point. point, yes. So there must be a lot of touches. Yes, you have to score 15 touches. Let me go to Zafra. It sounds like it's very interesting. <laughs> and, and we're growing up, we love that fight. <laughs> I don't know. Why did you start fencing? Well, I started fencing because, like, it was introduced to my school, Rainbow College, when I was in about SS1. And I took interest in the sport when it was first displayed in my school. Um, I took interest in it because it was, like, more of a mental sport. It has its physical aspects as well, yeah. but like, it's commonly called like the physical chess, and I'm interested in that kind of thing. So apart from the normal football, basketball, and all those kind of things, I decided to take up fencing, and that's done me feel good. So there's a lot of intelligence yes, applied intelligence, to it. Yes. Let me get Coach talking about technicalities of fencing. Coach Astrop, is it a dangerous sport? Um, well, um, I would say it's not. It's not a dangerous sport, and that's what most people see from the outside world. They feel it's a very dangerous sport, and they shy away from it. This is not a dangerous sport because um, majorly, um, if you talk about the head protection, you have the mask that protects the head, and you, if, just like the video you're watching, you could see they have um, a, a jacket they're wearing. They have both for the top and for the pants, and the jacket is made of Kefla. 
which is the same material used in making bulletproof, and the weapon arm they also put on the glove. Mm. So it's a very safe sport. Everywhere of the body is being protected. And on the likes of other sports compared in the world today, fencing has been one of the sports that um, has a very low amount of injury record in the world today. Mm. I'll come back to you, KK. Well, next month is the Junior Cadet Championship in all jazz. Any pressure going into that one? Um, there's, there's a little bit of pressure, a little bit, just a little bit, because um, we've put in so much effort um, with all the coaches on our team. Yeah. My coach, um, Coach um, Hastrop, and my coach, Coach Harrison, and my coach, Coach Maiwa, they put us through rigorous training and just to, get us, yeah, just to get us to that level where we can actually say that we can go there and bring something back home. So there's that pressure just to make Nigeria proud and represent that. Yeah. How does it feel, Zafir, that you're still in secondary school are you going to represent the country? It's a thing of honor, to be honest, because like most of my mates are not really, they play football and all that sports, but to be an international athlete mm. is something to be very proud of. Wow. Coach, how, how did we, I know eight fencers are going to Algeria. How did we pick uh, those athletes? Um, well, for now in Lagos State, we have um, fencing across a um, lot of schools in Lagos State. So what we do with uh, we have our national competition which took place um, last December and we picked our top um, athletes from there and mm -hmm. we believe they are well prepared with a lot of training from the national squad team preparing them very well to make sure that they go and come back with medals. Who we'll competed at the last championship first in Lagos? Oh, I am. We both did. Okay, oh, that's right. Because I was looking through the professor. Tell me, what was the experience? Oh, it was. It was fun. Generally, it was um, very challenging fencing other fencers with different styles from different schools. And it was nice to come out on top as I got the gold medal. Oh, so oh, it was nice. really interesting. Yeah, nice. So what, what ways do you think Zafir, that we can promote fencing some more, even get young talents like yourself to, to get into the sport? Well, fencing in this country can, I feel like it can be promoted in so many ways. Publicity in various ways can make fencing like more popular in the country. And then some programs have already been set up by the Federation, like the 1,000 grassroots fencers. Like a lot of things have been done to try and promote the publicity of fencing in the country. I think. So that means we need to do more. Yeah, Which more. Astro, so what are some of the challenges um, in promoting fencing? Um, well, I won't call it challenges per se, but I would just say um, it's been it's an amateur sport. So a lot of people are not to the light of what the sport is all about. When you go to introduce it in schools, you go to introduce fencing um, in communities, you hear people shy away from it because the ideology comes that they use weapons. So people always shy away from it. So I want to say, um, as I said earlier, it's a very safe sport. And to the angle of which fencing is, I believe it's making wave right now in Nigeria and it's gaining its ground very well and people are loving the sport. That's nice. But how did you get uh, the interest for fencing? Uh, well, actually, I would say um, I started as a fencer training. Um, after it, I gained interest. I went further as a coach. And not just, I did my coach training, international coach training, and I came back and I had to take the role of which I'm occupying right now. Kike, um, your friends, when they say, oh, Kike, well, what kind of sport are you doing? That's clearly those footballers and basketballers. Um, I mean, it always comes with, a little, just a little bit of laughter, they're like, ah, like it's not the general football or stereotypical basketball, all these popular sports. But at the end of the day, when I show them what I really do, they actually seem to gain interest and actually want to participate in the sport. Mm. So at the end of the day, everyone likes it. So you're winning followership. Yes, I am. Sport. As Zafir, has fencing in any way um, assisted you with, with your academics? Yes, as I said earlier on, it's like there's a lot of reasoning involved, like physical chess and I like subjects like mathematics, which involve a lot of critical reasoning and fencing. Actually, like, really helps me to understand a lot of things. What do you know about fencing? If you're watching us and you're wondering uh, what it's all about, it's good to know that some young talents are already picking interest in fencing. And with what you've heard, I want you to talk to us. What are the ways that you think we can develop fencing in Nigeria? It, look, it's really big in Europe, and uh, it can win us. Loads of medals, and when we go for international competitions, these guys um, with uh, some of their other colleagues will be going to our jazz next month for the June, for the world for the African Junior Cadet Championship, and it'll be good to see them go there, represent the country, and come back uh, with medals. So talk to us. I want to hear from you. What do you think? How can we get fencing 
going in the country. I don't want you to start saying Nigeria is not a fencing country. No, uh, we're too big of a country. We have the population of the market, and it can actually do well. Talk to us on Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook channels, I think sports. Send us an email, sports tonight at channels tv.com. Coach Astrop, uh, February is already here. So, what are the final touches we're putting for preparations? Um, well, preparations have started way back last year, and um, just like we said, we have four months, I mean, eight months squad, sorry, representing the country, five male and um, three female. Um, I would say our fences are well prepared. We've been, a lot of training has been going on right from last year, preparing them, um, organizing competitions within themselves, making sure they are well prepared for the competition. This same competition took place in Nigeria last year mm. from 1st to March, and we had close to 105 fences, about 10 Olympians that were in Nigeria last year. And we had um, our fences did very well. They come up with good medals um, and they made the country proud. So I feel going to Algeria, it's not going to be a big deal for fences. Okay, so that's what I look forward to. So uh, in your category, um, AKK, have you been trying to research some of your opponents and see if you can go there and get your gold? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, well, just last year, I participated at the Commonwealth Games for fencing. So I met a couple of Africans that are actually going to be participating in this year's championship. Mm. So I get to know them personally, um, learn about their training routines, try and see how that can better my fencing against them. Just yeah. give me a little bit of an edge yeah. against them, so it helps. And you looked at their foil to yes. I'll bend down. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for, uh, for you, uh, Zafri, I'm um, competing at the championship in, in Lagos. Did it give you good experience? Yeah, it gave me a lot of experience. I wasn't, like I went there with the mindset to just like, Try and gain more experience because I was trying to like see what my opponent could do and everything. I felt up 15 10 to my opponent, fetched about 10 points, yeah. which was quite a good achievement for me because I was short of experience. That was my first international oh, competition, oh. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so what's your specialty? Is it also the foil or the AP? I do the AP, okay, full body target. Wow, full body, so you just go all out, yeah, yeah all out. So, actually, get to know the talents and, and what, what, what they can um, specialize with. Um, well, I will throw light um, to that um, on grassroots fencing, okay. which we are doing right now. We have about 10,000 grassroots um, fencing. So it's, from there, we pick talented ones. So at such training, we go to the local schools, making sure um, we pick those that are talented and can do very well in the country. So it seems like um, it's connected, the wires are connected to what we can see, and so when they touch, it can read on the screen. Yes, to yes, point. yes, oh, yes. Cool. Just like the video we're watching. Okay, okay. So that's it. That's our uh, fencing for you. Let's just hope that it continues to get bigger and better in the country. Do you guys have parting words as we're about to go now? Um, uh, just personally want to say uh, thank you to channels and to. of course thank you to my school Rainbow College for giving us the foundation and you know helping us start out our fencing careers. Yeah. And our parents, obviously, and God. I know. Of course, Afri, you say thank you, mommy. And also, yeah. Yeah. also my coaches and everybody that I know. Been you have a lot of coaches. Yes. As Afri, I'd like to say a big thank you to Rainbow College. You know, the sports prefect of Rainbow oh. College. I'd like to say a big thank you to Rainbow, to Channels, thank you too. and my coaches, Coach Mayowa, Coach Astro, Coach Harrison, and my dad. Thank you very much. If you didn't call Coach Astro, I'll catch you right there. <laughs> Coach, I must say thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you uh, Zafri. Thank you, uh, Kike. We'll, we'll get to see you guys again before you go to our jail. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So that's it, uh, the development of fencing in Nigeria. I love the fact that these guys are picking interest and they're already representing the country. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, so much is going down in the world of sports. We'll discuss it, so don't go anywhere. Stay. It's my team. And my team makes me